taken from the ground and forged in fire. The sword is an elegant weapon, built for a more civilised time of combat. Whilst in today's age they are very rarely used in real fights, the elegance and skill required to wield them is often still portrayed throughout our media, particularly across films, books, video games and TV shows. So today we ask the question, what is our fascination with swords? And why do we continue to use them within our stories and shows? As you can see, swords are pretty common across our shows and films. However, they're just as popular in other forms of media too, especially in the world of gaming, where one standout genre is role-playing games, which often contain fantasy or medieval settings, and of course, lots and lots of swords. They are just as present across book series too, such as these ones. Throughout all of this, there is one common factor, and that is that all of these forms of media tell a story. Whether it be a game, film or book, they all stir emotion and have us following along on characters' journeys. But why are swords so important to all of these narratives? I think before we attempt to answer that, we have to understand what exactly it means to wield and to use a sword, which means it's time for a quick sword and history lesson. With me today, I have a few swords that can be found from across our media. The first is a great sword, which as you can see, is particularly long in length. They were often wielded with two hands, like so. This very one here was made famous by Aragorn, as it was wielded in the famous series Lord of the Rings. You also have the two most popular swords on our screen, a long sword and a hand and a half sword, also known as a bastard sword, which is famous for its easy manoeuvrability and speed. Of course, these two are only plastic, as these are for training purposes and choreography only. These ones are a little bit more real though. Rapiers, cutlasses and fencing swords are all extremely popular on our screens. As are hybrid swords, such as this one, which is inspired by the famous Witcher series. Hybrid swords are made up of various design components from different swords, and they're all put together in a kind of mismatch. The result though is still extremely usable and effective. It certainly is for Geralt anyway. However, when designing a sword for a story or film, etc., you can sometimes think outside of the boundaries of historically accurate swords. The result? A fantasy sword, like this one right here. These are designed to be unique and memorable, to capture the imagination over and over again. Which is just as well, really, because the spikes all along them mean that it's not particularly practical. So now that we know some of the different types of swords, what does it take to wield them? The simple answer is anyone can wield them, but to use them well requires both skill and dedication. Throughout our history, people have dedicated their lives to training and mastering various martial arts, and using a sword, or any weapon for that matter, is no different. As the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. 
We can easily identify a better fighter in Jaws, and we can easily see someone's skill level simply based on how they wield their weapon. But often, the better warrior can still lose, for there is never certainty with swords, and that is exactly what makes them so interesting. While skill is undoubtedly important, and will likely win out, endurance and luck can play just as big a role in deciding the fate of Jaws and fights. This keeps fights gripping, as we are so unsure how events will play out. Take this clip, for example. It was obvious from the beginning who the better fighter was, and therefore who was more likely to win this duel, yet for a brief moment towards the end, we are suddenly unsure and doubt this outcome. The other warrior's skill that he has shown up to this point becomes irrelevant, as in that very moment we genuinely believe that the other character will prevail. Then in another twist, this hope is taken away again, and we as the audience are left with a stir of emotions. This is something that sword fights and medieval fights in general can offer, that isn't really available for any other kind of fighting. Swords and medieval weapons create suspense, through the uncertainty that at any point everything could change, regardless of who is in control or dominant in the fight. This then helps to grip audiences and tell a better story overall. So swords can be perceived as a storytelling tool then. But there is another thing to note here, and that is that there is a certain level of skill and respect that comes with swords too, something that guns or hand-to-hand -hand combat just doesn't give us in the same sense. Take a sword as iconic and legendary as this one here, the katana. In Japan, the katana is sacred, and throughout their history, those who carried them also carried with them the highest and utmost authority and respect. This then transcribed over to their media, where tales and legends of their bravest warriors fighting with katanas and other weaponry was told. East Asian media tends to have two separate approaches when it comes to sword fighting scenes. The first is that they either go all out with very heavily stylized fighting. This is extremely common in things such as anime, the second method is that they tend to go for more realistic duels. This is often down to the more realistic fighting style and choreography that they use, especially when compared to Hollywood that often opts for a mix of both realism and stylized in their scenes. Another thing that makes their fight scenes stand out is the care and tenacity of the filmmakers, as they often make every detail showcase the tension and grit of the fights. In both Chinese and Japanese, they actually have specific words for this tension that is built up around the jewels. In Chinese, it is known as qi shun, and in Japanese, ikioi. Both words relate to essentially the aura and spirit of the battle that rises before and during a fight. Again, this can often be seen in animes. Together, all of this combined with their respect for the weapons results in detailed and well done fight scenes. These fight scenes actually help to shape Hollywood's jewels too, by inspiring us to look back across our own history and start to incorporate more historical weaponry and fight scenes, especially swords. Not only did this inspire Hollywood's turn towards more medieval based films, but also futuristic ones that still used weaponry that was inspired or based upon medieval swords. The biggest example of this? Is in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars' lightsaber captured an entire generation showing off effectively 
a futuristic sword. Apart from the sleek design and magnificent colour, there is a certain beauty and fascination that comes with a weapon like this, something that draws you towards it. And the same can be said about swords too, we are just naturally drawn to them. And I think the simple answer for this is it's our tradition, it is ingrained in our legends and stories that swords have a special significance, one of power, authority and nobility. But that is only one part of the answer too. Instead, I think there is a more important meaning, and that is that swords are poetic, they are honourable, and they represent the person wielding them in a way that no other weapon ever could. Swords can help to highlight emotion, they can push a narrative or showcase a character in a new light. The same blade we defend is the one we attack with, and the dance of striking and parrying becomes one, highlighting perfect skill, balance and movement. Together, this can capture our imagination over and over again. Ultimately, a sword fight is like a chess game of emotion, skill and intellect. The perfect combination that appeals to our love for stories and insists that even if our own world isn't just, stories should be. Weapons like guns decide things with too arbitrary of a result, but swords? They dictate a story with honour, and this will always appeal to us.